In this next example, we look at the capital gains tax implications for trust, so paragraph 80. Now, let's start this example. It says, in 20X2, Mr. X passed away. In terms of his last will and testament, a trust had to be created, and a block of flats he owned had to be transferred into the trust. At the time, the block of flats had a market value of 10 million rands. Now, I'm not going to go into all the detail of this, but you must please remember section 9HA that applies when a person passes away. Mr. X on the date of death is deemed to have disposed of all of his assets at market value. So in other words, it would be proceeds, 10 million rands, and base cost, well, whatever the base cost was. I tell you, the, the block of flats generated income of a million rands during the current year of assessment. It is clear from the trust deed that Ms. Y has a vested right to the rental income. So who will be taxed on that income? Ms. Y will be taxed on it in terms of section 25B1 because there is no donor and there's no donor what's allowed. In terms of the trust deed, Mr. X's daughter, Ms. Y, which is this person, has a vested right to the ownership of the block of flats. However, the trust has to keep the block of flats until Ms. Y turns 18 and then the ownership must be transferred to her. Now understand what happened here. It means that when Mr. X died, his that asset had to go into a trust, but it belongs to Ms. Y already. She has a vested right. So the trust just has to hold on to it until she turns 18, and then it will be distributed to her. So I want you to understand, very important here, does Ms. Y had a vested right since the date of Mr. X's death. So why this is important for you is does no vesting took place. So even here, where they now tell you, she turned 18 on the last day of August and the block of flats was transferred to her name. At that time, the market value was 12 million rands. Now I want you to understand, although the trust is moving it from the trust to her, that is just the actual ownership that's moving, the paperwork basically. She already had a vested right to it. So nothing actually happens, she's just the, tr the paperwork is being completed. So they ask you, A, calculate the taxable income from Ms. Y and the trust based on the above information. So what we need to see is that, that million rands that she was received during the year from Ms. Y, she will be taxed on it. The trust will not be taxed on it because she has a vested right to it. When they transfer the flats to Ms. Y, make sure you see that she already had a vested right, so there is no capital gain. They then ask you in B, what happens if she sells it on the last day of the year for 15 million rands? Now, if she sells it, that 15 million rands will be the proceeds. But what is the base cost? That is the big question. The base cost in this case will be the 10 million rands. And the 10 million rands is the 10 million rands that Mr. X had the market value of the property on the day of his death. Why? Because remember, he is deemed as if he sold it to her at market value. So the trust is held as a placeholder. So that is what she was treated as if she had acquired it for. Right. That gives us a 5 million rands CDT from his wife, and we do the rest. Compare that now to the next example. The next example says, in 20x2, Mr. X passed away. In terms of his last will and testament, a trust had to be created, and a block of flats he owned had to be transferred into the trust. At the time, the block of flats had a market value of 10 million rands. The block of flats generated income of a million rands during the year. It is clear from the trustee that Ms. Y has a vested right to the rental income. Very important now, and I want you to compare these two paragraphs, this one and the previous one. In terms of the trustee, no person has a vested right to the ownership of the block of flats. The trustees have discretion in the distribution of any of the capital assets. In the previous example, we said, in terms of the trustee, she has a vested right to the ownership. So that's the big difference there. They then tell you she turned 18 and the trustees decided to transfer the block of flats. So what you should see here is that when she turned 18 here, it vested for the first time. So the big difference is, in the previous example, it vested on the date that Mr. X passed away, it vested, because it told you that she has the ownership. Here it only vests when she turns 18. So see now what how important this is. What is the taxable income for the trust and for Ms. Y? So the only thing 
taxable income of those earners that million rands. Who will be taxed on that? And this Y will be taxed on it. Can you see? Okay, now, make sure you see the following. When they transfer it, they move it from the trust to Ms. Y. So this is a disposal. This is the vesting. So they must be CDT calculated. So the proceeds is 12 million rands. Right? And the base cost was the 10 million rands when the trust acquired it. So I want you to see here, 12 million minus 10 is 2 million rands. However, now you need to remember... Because paragraph 81 says, if it is transferred to the beneficiary, they will be taxed on it. So see, this is the trust. This is a CGT column. Can you see null? That 2 million rands, where does it go? It goes into Ms. Y. Now they ask you, what happens if she sells it at the last day of February 26? If she sells it for 15 million rands? Right, so if she sells it for 15 million rands, that will be the proceeds. The base cost will be the 12 million rands when she first acquired it. And she first acquired it at this point in time. So in total, I want you to see that the 2,000 is from when it was first transferred to her. And then there's the extra 3,000 was generated after it was sold. So make sure you pay attention to how these are distributed. Example 3. Again, we just changing up a little bit. In 20x2, Mr. X passed away. In terms of his last will and testament, a trust had to be created and a block of flats he owned had to be transferred into the trust. At the time, the block of flats had a market value of 10 million rands. The block of flats generated income of a million rands in the current year of assessment and it is clear from the trustee that Ms. Y has a vested right. In terms of the trustee, no person has a vested right to the ownership. The trustees have discretion in the distribution of any capital assets. In the the trustees now decided to sell it for 12 million rands. Then A, what is the implication for Miss Y on the above? She will be taxed on the million rands. Right, she'll only be taxed on that. When they sell it, who, this, the, the trustees, they don't distribute it to anybody. So proceeds 12 million, base cost 10 million, the trust will be taxed on that. Then they ask can B, what are the implications if they decided to transfer the capital gain to Ms. Y? So remember, paragraph 80 had two situations. The one is where the asset goes to the beneficiary. And the second one was where the capital gain goes to the beneficiary. In, and that was discussed in paragraph 82. And that is what we're seeing here. If they transfer to the beneficiary, who gets taxed on it? The beneficiary. So C in situation B, although they calculate it, right, C the trust does not get taxed, that gets transferred to Ms. Y in terms of paragraph 82.